Good morning and good afternoon. I want to welcome you who may be joining us today to Market Insights. It's our monthly presentation by International Market Centers, and I'm Kimberly Porter, the Senior Programming Manager at IMC. For those who may be new to our presentations, IMC, International Market Centers, serves as the Center of Commerce for the furniture, gift, home decor, and apparel industries, bringing buyers and sellers from all over the world together through physical markets in Atlanta, High Point, and Las Vegas. We actually have our Las Vegas market taking place this coming week. And so if you want any information on attending or um, what other events and exhibitors might be available, please visit our website at lasvegasmarket.com. We also have our upcoming Atlanta markets and High Point markets. And so you may visit those websites as well for more information. Um, Market Insights is our webinar series that's an extension of our on-site programming uh, for IMC's gift and home markets with a goal to offer the participants timely, exclusive, and actionable content throughout the year. Um, for more information about CEUs, upcoming webinars, open showrooms, digital resources, and more, please visit our website. Um, today's Market Insights, which is 2021, the year of wellness, healthy home products, and trends that can drive sales. Um, we have with us, in partnership, Gifts and Decorative Accessories Editor-in-Chief, uh, Lenise Willis. And we also have some fabulous designers and association members um, who will all be participating as we discuss what goes on today. Um, it is CEU accredited, and if you registered through Zoom, that information will be emailed out to you. If you are watching this post-presentation, you can email me at kporter at imcenters.com, and I'll get you that uh, CEU information. Uh, we will have a Q&A available towards the end, so if you have any questions, just hit your Q&A tab and uh, go ahead and ask them there. Uh, Lenise, I'll turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kim, first of all, for, you know, letting gifts and decorative accessories do this with you guys. Um, health and wellness is certainly a key term for 2021. After the year Absolutely. everyone had in 2020, <laughs> consumers are really refocusing on their health and wellness. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to really talk about what products um, retailers and designers should be focusing on how has this craving for health and wellness affected the gift and home furnishings industry? So we have an exciting panel with us today that are gonna help us talk through some of those things. So um, I would love it if you guys would just kind of go around and introduce yourselves and your title so that everyone know, watching kind of knows who you are and why they should listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll start, I'm at the top. It's Alan Share. hello to everyone. I run the Spa Industry Association. We have about 80,000 members uh, around the globe. Uh, you'll get to meet my work wife in just a minute here, but our association is free to join. And even though it's a spa association, we're big in self-care. So whether you're a spa, a salon, a gift store, whomever it is, you are welcome to join. Just go to spaindustryassociation.com and sign up for free. Awesome. All right, work wife. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Alan. Hi, I'm Patty Byro, and if you haven't guessed, I'm coming to you from the great state of Texas. And um, Alan and I, in a normal year, probably are at 20 to 30 shows from coast to coast, used to be Europe and Asia, too. And um, not only do I serve as the director of education for the Spa Industry Association, but I have my own consulting company, but perhaps even more pertinent, I'm an independent retailer. Um, I ha started a pop-up store about eight years ago. I sell wine accessories. So I have the opportunity to experience retail from many different angles. And I'm excited to be giving some insights into what I call well-being retail. Absolutely. Angela, can you introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela Harris. I am the CEO and principal of a company called Trio. 
I'm coming to you from Denver, Colorado, in my office here. Um, I might have a little bit different perspective than most of our panelists, so thank you so much for um, letting us join. We're super grateful to be part of this incredible group. Um, I um, run a interior design firm, um, have done so for the last 20 years. We have about 70 designers on staff, and we work with all new community development work, so builders, architects, developers, and so forth. I'm also the HBA Home Builders Association president for the Metro Denver, and I sit on the board of trustees at the National Home Builders Association. So I'm so grateful to be here and um, most importantly to engage in this discussion because it is certainly a discussion that we're having at our level and I love the cross pollination between all of the different disciplines. I think it's highly important. So I'm so excited. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And then finally, Lisa, last but not least, Hello, everybody. So glad to be here today. I'm Lisa Kahn. I am the founder of Lisa Kahn Designs in Naples, Florida. Um, and I am also the founder of Finding Sanctuary, which is my specific uh, wellness oriented arm of my business. So yeah, this is great. I think you guys have pulled together a really wonderful group of people. Everyone's perspectives are so different and fresh. Wow. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so since you brought that up, everyone has a different perspective. Um, let's kind of go around first just to kick things off and have e each of you talk about, you know, in your particular section of the industry, how are you seeing this topic of health and wellness kind of come up, especially has it become more important in this, you know, kind of recent year and last year? And is it being represented in new ways in your segment of the industry? Alan, we'll start with you since you're at the top. <laughs> I'm, well, and the only male here too, so I feel like I'm in very good company with you ladies. Um, I've got uh, 16 pages of trends to the right on my screen, but I promise I'm not going to cover them all today. But we have learned a lot in the last year. So even though we say spa business, we know this is self-care, spa, wellness, gift. It all fits under the same umbrella. We know that things like digital are important and not going away. We've learned that taking care of yourself and being responsible for your own health care has become critically important in the last year. We've learned that being alone, we're not very good at it. And we really like to flock and gather and be together. We have watched a huge increase in uh, vegan style food, not even for vegans and vegetarian style food. People's trend to look for healthier eating has grown a lot uh, in the last year. We are seeing all kinds of things that re uh, relate to horse or equine therapy and stem cells. And one of them that is a favorite of mine is sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep has become critically important. That doesn't mean with the beer and Fritos on your couch and falling asleep, but I love Fritos. But sleep has become a critical factor in how you sleep in the last year as well. Those, so those are some of my top trends and things that I see happening and changing into 2021 and 22. Awesome. Patty, what about you? Well, I actually have my, my cheat sheet here. So <laughs> one of the trends I think that has become really critical is what I call healthy hydration, where we might have been carrying our own water bottles before we have a whole new interest in chilling water bottles and personal hydration. Supplements are a huge area. Um, as we've been locked down in our homes, our workspaces have never been more important to us, but also the well-being of our home. And that's kind of not only physical, but psychological and environmental. Um, if anything, and boy, does this speak to, to gifts, uh, we would not have made it this far without our pets. And we're certainly, I mean, really, I mean, what would we do without our pets? Um, and trying to achieve, you know, reducing stress in our lives. And I think this is all creating real opportunities for well-being retail, for personal use, for family use, creating environments. And one of the things that I've seen is that gifting has not gone away during this pandemic. Uh, if anything, it's more thoughtful. Um, it has greater, you know, we try to buy things that have a healthy benefit to them. So, and then I couldn't stop without mentioning this. Um, certainly consumption of alcoholic beverages, <laughs> all of the home and decorative accessories that go with it are very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Angela, what are you seeing in your industry, in your segment of the industry? And you're on mute, just unmute yourself real quick. I think um, from my perspective, you know, it's really interesting because our disciplines, whether it's architecture or interior design or whether it's structural engineers, civil engineers, so forth, you know, we've been having this discussion around the table for at least 10 years, if not longer, right? But where we're seeing the most significant shift is now the consumer uh, understands the importance of wellness and design and the built environment. And, and what we have seen historically is once the consumer takes hold of a concept like this, we just catapult into a different element of, of how we need to look at things. And I think it's so critically important because it will fundamentally, fundamentally change the way that we design the built environment. So we're looking at everything, you know, 50% of our business is production, single family housing, building communities in that regard. And 50% of our uh, work is high density multifamily work. So apartment complexes, that kind of thing. And we're seeing it in both sectors of the market. What we know for sure is the wellness industry is a $4.2 trillion industry. And we can design with healthy materials and construction elements. But if we fall short when it comes to the FF&E or the furniture, the accessories, the artwork, the area rugs, the so forth, we're really not doing our jobs as wellness experts. So we're really honing in on working and partnering with our manufacturers right now to make sure that we are designing product that fits all of the wellness components, which really is the mitigation of toxins, right? It's like at, 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 at every level, how we do that, but don't compromise the integrity of the design. Yeah, absolutely. And then finally, Lisa, um, how are you seeing in your segment of the industry, you know, health and wellness come sort of coming to the forefront and is it being represented in new ways? Oh, I love that. So, you know, I complete our design work all through a lens that I call sanctuary. And this is something that I've been developing for the last seven or eight years. So it's interesting that when the pandemic came on, I was like, wow, this is really when everyone needs this concept that I understand of sanctuary, which is really that we create peace and wellness in the environment around us because it truly inspires those things inside us. And I think, you know, it is that concept of trying to stay in that place of a high immune system, being grounded, being spiritually healthy, being mentally healthy, emotionally, physically, like it's the whole package really that we have been trying to address with this concept um, of sanctuary. And, you know, I've been so fascinated at all the research that has been done on healthcare spaces and how you create a truly healing environment and trying to bring as much of that understanding as I can into the homes that we design and that we work on down here. Um, so, you know, as part of that, I think a couple of specific trends that I have been seeing is a real blurring of the lines, um, I would say. Instead of just bringing the outside in, we're actually looking at blurring the lines between the outside and the inside. And in Florida, that's not a difficult thing to do just because we have so much glass in most of the projects that we work in. But, you know, nature is an incredibly healing force. And I think that, you know, bringing those natural elements um, to bear, whether we're inside or outside, is really a big part of it. And I also think um, spaces that are multi-use. You know, we have a lot of open floor plans down here. People who really like in the past those big great rooms and that's really not conducive to having an entire family home and everybody trying to work and do school and so we're creating more specialty spaces again which I think is interesting and spaces that need to be able to flip quickly from one activity to another um, in an efficient way so yeah absolutely and I can attest when at the near the beginning of the pandemic talking about bringing the outdoors in I was craving I'm in a big city I was craving like plants inside yeah. killed them all so then I started getting paintings of plants <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that <laughs> yeah and so plants as the piece of home decor and art really made a big difference for me because I couldn't keep the live ones alive <laughs> but I could at least have some piece of that <laughs> yeah Alan were you, did you have a comment to say as well I just wanted to say to both what well what all three of the ladies were saying um I know most people saw the meme that was running around the internet this last year that said for the second time this week, I ordered my monthly allocation of wine. I don't think anything has been more true. <laughs> um, I've noticed also now that there is a new trend of wine by the glass. You'll start seeing single serve pouches. 
Um, I know um, Australians are doing it in these 200 milliliter pouches. Remember the Capri Suns, that kind of wine pouch. So if you see adults at soccer games carrying pouches, it's not always uh, Capri wine anymore. In addition to both Angela and Lisa's points, we moved from Southern California and the Western side of Minneapolis to way, way North Phoenix. And we're in a one story living, which I've never had in my life. And I have to tell you, all of this bringing the world uh, inside, we have a big no or an open area behind our house. And it's like, I can see stars and I hear birds now that I'm not in the city. And you know this comfort feeling from living in the house. So to the ladies credit, I know that that design and that layout, we added a lookout to see the mountains. We put a steam unit into our steam shower. We've done the things that make our home, as Patty said, a comfortable place where we just like to spend time and I don't have an issue with it. Yeah. So now that we've really been mentioning our homes, Angela, I would love for you to dig in a little bit about this concept of health and wellness and how it's changing maybe architectural design and impacting residential interiors and maybe um, some products you're seeing that are more commonplace now because of that. Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I think we're all singing the same tune and it's so exciting to hear everybody's comments. I mean, I think from our perspective, we have to remember that 90% of our time is spent indoors. And um, as a result, 90% of our homeowners say that their overall um, wellness is of the utmost importance when they're looking for new communities. So that's whether it's a single family house or whether it's multifamily dimensional living. And some of the things that we're seeing come back online is more compartmentalized space, not those big open floor plans, you know, to what Lisa was saying to support what she was saying there, I think is really important. Um, we're seeing home gyms and fitnesses come back. Certainly the steam rooms come back. Any type of element of spas that we can see are also coming back online, both in multifamily as a featured amenity, as well as in our single family production housing as well. This, I think this is a great example of one of our multifamily projects that we um, recently installed. Almost Actually, it's been over a year. It was installed before COVID. And what I love about this is you have the meditation pods on the right. You have these beautiful Phillips collection chairs made out of recycled seat belts, which we just love. We, we adore Phillips collection. Um, you know, studies have, have shown that that rocking motion goes, you know, it helps with that mental balance and helps to soothe and calm the well-being of our residents. So we designed this whole space around those rocking chairs specifically. You can see that live green wall in the back. That is, um, you know, part of the elements of biophilic design that we layer into the components of our new construction. So these are all just kind of tips and, um, you know, trends that we're seeing in new community development. I think you're going to continue to see these kind of things come up. This is another project that we were really excited about that shows a lot of, again, our partnership with Phillips Collection. You can see the natural organic artwork in the back. We worked with them to customize some furniture pieces in a very sustainable way. A lot of these materials have natural um, fibers from a fabric perspective, which is also very critical. And we really hone in the, in the constructability of the ff &E pieces, because again, as we're constructing these new development in these new communities, you know, we go into the lighting and the materials and the tile and the flooring and all of that in a very sustainable, non-toxic toxic component, but we can't fall short with the furniture and accessories. These decorative pillows are fantastic. We're working with Wildcat Territory right now on a whole new decorative pillow, pillow line that works into our components of, of wellness and mitigation of those toxins. Wallpaper on the back wall, we use that a lot because it, a lot of times we can find things that won't compromise the design. It'll enhance the design. It'll enhance the built environment. And um, everybody deserves great design. And more importantly, everybody deserves access to that, to that wellness and that safety and security within their own home. So, you know, we love um, looking at these things. These are more production um, environments, some of the models that we've been working with. And I just think that it's an important aspect to look at it from a very holistic perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And since you mentioned holistic um, and we have our PowerPoint up, I'm going to skip to Lisa and bring you into the conversation because you really have a holistic approach to health and wellness. 
Um, have you seen a big uptick in engagement with regard to your client base? And what are some of the most prevalent requests, you know, when people reach out and they're starting to, you know, start this new approach to their lives? You know, I appreciate you asking that because we really have, and for the first time, I actually have people coming to my office, calling me on the phone and saying, oh my gosh, Lisa, please create a sanctuary for my family. That's what we really need. I think the understanding of how the built environment really affects us on so many levels, you know, because it does. I mean, it really does impact our health in every way. Um, so I am having people specifically ask for that. And we did um, develop a whole line of products that can help people actually Access sanctuary. I find, you know, lighting a candle is one of the quickest ways to be able to change the mood of a space. And so that's what you're seeing up on the screen now. Um, we also worked with an essential oil uh, professional to develop a line of sprays and some other things that are just all organic, all healthy, very soft, but they just really change the mood of the moment. Um, but, you know, as far as our private client work goes, I think just the understanding that they have now about the need to heal at home, the need to be able to be healthy and safe at home, the need to be able to have spaces that support them in the pursuit of those activities and the ability to have their families be all welcomed in, but then be able to have separation between people when you need for quarantine zones. I just, it has been amazing to me, the sharpness of clarity that COVID has brought to our work and to our clients' vision of what they want to create for themselves. So it really, the shift is profound. And Angela is absolutely right. It is changing the way we do design on every level. Absolutely. Um, Alan, I would love for you to chime in as well, because as part of the spa industry, in what ways are you seeing, and I know I'm all over the place with my questions compared to the PowerPoint, sorry, Kim, <laughs> um, but I am interested in, in your perspective in the spa industry. How is that evolving with this idea of health and wellness? Are there new products or new ideas associated with that? Well, what shifts are occurring, I guess? If I jump back just to the, the everything's going to be pre-C and post-C, right? Pre-COVID and post-COVID. What are you going to do? The companies in the industry that had uh, strong retail sites actually did extremely well during the last uh, year. We saw a number in our industry build sites last minute and find out that it helped them uh, survive as well. What I'm seeing right now as we regenerate and people forget even though California, New York and some of the coast states were more closed down, a lot of the rest of the country actually was still open and doing business even during the pandemic in some way or or form. I'm seeing that a lot of the new companies that want to enter our industry are having a good start. It's not that people were bored, but we like change and we like new things. So companies that were solid and engaged and supported their clientele are still doing really well, but there has never been a better time for new companies to enter the spa channel and come out with unique and interesting products and hero items. And maybe Patty might be able to address a little more of that as well. Awesome. Yeah, Patty, do you want to chime in? And, um... Yeah, actually, um, one of the biggest trends that I've seen is that, okay, so spa retail has always been around. And for many people, it was either a souvenir or it was in a way to extend the treatment. Well, now it's taken on a whole new value, and that's really trying to achieve some kind of healthy lifestyle at home. But also concurrent with spas and wellness businesses, really expanding their retail reach has been the whole growth of other kinds of businesses, mattress stores, florists, you know, yoga studios. Um, I have a home decor shop I work with in Silverton, Oregon, who has had added a whole feature within her brick and mortar of spa at home. And so there are, and my pet store here, has got all kinds of, you know, your kitten journal, your uh, tabs that go on the collar to help them relax and sleep at night. And so the crossover to me is just amazing because I, I was thinking about this today when I was walking the dog, which is my best time to think, that there's an opportunity for every single retailer to develop some component of wellness. And my aha moment today was, well, gosh, I'm sure I'll be working a lot more at home. 
And so one of the first things that I ordered um, was a gel mat because I was standing at the sink longer and standing at the, you know, it really made a huge difference. And so I think every room of our home and almost every component of our routine for the day can have some wellness retail items built into it. Two last thing on that, to Patty's point, my favorite Ace Hardware down the street here has an entire self-care section in it, which they put in in the last year. So even though I stop for the Traeger barbecue sauce, I tend to wander over there. And they also have a house cat named Lucy. And Lucy, everyone who comes in stops to pet Lucy. So think how comfortable that makes people who come in the store that the first thing they do is where's the cat where's Lucy and they're over there giving Lucy a little petting I would think it opens your pocketbook up a little more as well <laughs> that's a good point I love that both of you brought up this idea of pets too because there is something to be said even like you know when we were writing about pet gifts there's something that happens in your mind when you see an image of an animal it tends to like lower blood pressure even. Like there's like mm -hmm. medical <laughs> like results from just seeing images of pets. So I'm glad you, you brought that up into that conversation. Um, well, let's just kind of shift gears a little bit and just have everyone, you know, chime in on what are some must have or must stock products that retailers should really be focusing on to bring this health and wellness idea into their store and, and what should designers be using? What sort of um, suggestions do you guys have? Alan, we'll start with you. We just keep kicking off with you, so go ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll, I, won't, I won't fade away on the next time you ask that question. So <laughs> um, one of the things I've noticed over the last year, bath and body products are up just humongous. Uh, people are spending time in their shower and in their bathtub and, and their pools if they have them. So I see a huge increase in those items. I'm going to go to Patty's favorite for a minute, which is pets. I think we've had more chewy boxes show mm -hmm. up at the house here for Rocco than in any uh, year in the past. And in addition, um, beds and blankets. Our dog has more hangout spots in the house now than I ever thought uh, possible, including one at the front door so he can look out the window and keep an eye for when we're coming home after we've left him. Absolutely. Patty, what are your suggestions? Well, I, I'm into show and tell. And so whether it's a room spray, like Lisa was talking about, or whether you carry something like smudging sticks, which have really just anything that helps lighting a candle. And I agree, the quickest thing you can do to kind of change the vibe is to light that candle and embrace some aromatherapy. Roll on aromatherapy, which is so easy to carry with you before and after going into the grocery store and you're stressed. I think that's really critical. Um, home maintenance isn't going anywhere. Okay, so I may be able to get my Botox next time, but a little home maintenance with a jade roller can't hurt anybody. And so anything that helps, you know, whether they're under eye patches or lip um, rehydrators or whatever that is that helps you kind of maintain. I mean, some people I know went without a haircut for six months. And then um, <laughs> made in America is going to be more important than ever. Not only that, but I really find that my spa and wellness clients that I work with are, they're not only asking me about where is this product coming from, but they want to know animal cruelty standards, green standards, what are the ingredients, how long is the shelf life? The whole set of questions around products has really changed too. And then, you know, of course I'm with Alan and I think, okay, so here's a secret sauce idea. So if we know there are these great trends, like, gosh, who would have thought that home bars were going to become super popular again? But it's true. Like I just brought in for my wine business, a whole series of these wine glass holders that you slap onto your shower or your bathtub that'll hold your wine glass so it doesn't spill over into your bath. So wherever you can combine things, and I have to show you one of my favorite products. Okay, I had these made for my dog. They say winery dog. <laughs> oh, when we go and visit a winery, because everybody takes their pets everywhere now, 
he wears this, but this is also a hot retail item in my, in my boutique. Awesome. Kind of my thoughts. <laughs> um, Angela, how about you in the interior space? Um, in the interior design world, I would say that we're always looking for flexibility and kind of the jewel on top of our projects that can make things special. So for us coming down the pipeline, we are honing in a lot on textiles because everything stems from textiles, whether it's decorative pillows or area rugs or furniture or so forth. So I think textiles is a big one. Um, any small accessories that we can celebrate wellness with, again, I, I know I've said Phillips Collection a lot, but Phillips Collection has these tiny little geodes, these little crystals that you set. I have one on my desk that promotes, you know, good energy and, and having some of those ele elements around your um, home, I think is a huge component of what we're looking at. They also take things that, you know, uh, historically would have been thrown around out as waste and they reinvent it into such a beautiful art piece that has a story behind it that you can get emotionally connected to. And so I think we look at all of those things um, quite a bit. And I would say that's really what we're looking for on the interior design side. Okay, awesome. And then finally, Lisa, what recommendations do you have for retailers and designers as far as what products to, to stock and implement? You know, um, because we have needed to have multi-purpose spaces and so many people have been working from home, um, continuing to work remotely, schooling from home, desks, writing desks, not big giant desks, but writing desks, tables that can double as desks. I wish they were stocked at every store around because we would be buying them all the time. Everybody needs them and they've been very hard to come by. Um, and also the seating to go with that and the lighting to go with that to be able to, um, you know, accommodate that need that we're just seeing so much. And I think to Angela's point, you know, things that represent the natural world, it's kind of what you said a little earlier about bringing pictures of plants because you couldn't um, have, you know, real plants because you were killing them, which is unfortunate. We'll talk later. I'll give you some tips. Um, but, you know, when Angela was talking about crystals and things, anything that is representative of the natural world, beautiful slices of wood, like you see from the Phillips collection that are so beautiful, um, geodes, uh, natural raffia wallpapers, anything that can get, you know, water hyacinth that is woven, wicker, um, natural textiles and natural colors and beautiful weaves, all that stuff that helps that blurring of the lines that I mentioned before, those things we need and people really want. So those are good to continue developing more of those, I think. And I would just build on what Lisa said just really quick in terms of not only is it an experience that you have with those elements, but it also helps to promote better indoor air quality. And so yeah. that's another component of wellness that we need to take note of. And as almost by default of having a beautiful environment, right? So I think that's important, that's a good point. And one more point to Angela's point, if I can build on that as well, pretty soon we'll have a good pyramid going here. Yeah. Um, when we moved into this home we live in Cave Creek, I'm thankful to the owners who built it 10 years ago because they put almost every upgrade you can possibly buy from toll into the house, which I would never do, but now I understand why people do it. And it doesn't have just air cleaners, it has electronic air cleaners. So we're getting a double, triple down on how clean the air is. And then because we're in the spa business, we went to a company like Bodywork Mall and we bought from them from through a company called Atmos Air, um, blue light, uh, I'm not getting it right, ionic filters that got installed up in the furnaces, mm -hmm. which gave us another level of cleanliness because in my world, air and water, those are the two basics. If those aren't clean and aren't good, then everything else you're doing, it's just basic. So uh, I firmly believe what, if I was having uh, Lisa redo the interior of my house one of these days, uh, and Angela, then I would be putting all of these extras in that make life at home a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Add one more thing quickly. Um, we're also seeing a resurgence in interest in gardening. Um, I think okay. that weirdness at the beginning of the pandemic when it felt even odd to have to go to the grocery store and it was stressful. Um, people are wanting to be a little bit more in touch with their food sources and be able to perhaps grow things in containers, raised planting beds, um, indoor hydroponic gardening systems. I've been experimenting with a few of those myself successfully and it's very rewarding. It does clean the air to Alan's point um, and Angela's point as well. 
but it also provides you then things that you can sustain your body and your family with, which is fabulous. Absolutely. I know we were, we're working on a couple of things right now. And we even mentioned um, modern sprout is a fabulous maker, especially for city living to have like small, you know, giftable tomato plants in a little canister mm -hmm. that's really adorable and attainable. You know, I can't garden, but I can grow a little tomato plant that they give me. They have a lot of great options, especially for city living too, that, that I, I love them. That's my little plug. <laughs> I love them too. <laughs> Um, so Angela, you already mentioned this, so I don't know if you have anything else that you want to expand on it, but we were curious about what sort of wellness trends are happening in, in actual construction. I know you talked about air quality for sure. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that point? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times we follow the seven points of the USGBC, which is the well building standard. So, I mean, you know, the biggest one for us is the mitigation of toxins the indoor air quality, and then as well as the, the water and the water filtration from a construction component. But what we have, again, what we've been finding is we can build the built environment, but if we really don't take it all the way across the finish line with the furniture and accessories, then we fall short. And it's a very important component because it's not just about specifying a natural fabric on a sofa, for example. It's really getting deeper than that. It's what is the constructability? What kind of glue are they using? How is it, you know, constructed? Where is it constructed? To Patty's point, is it made in America? How far is it going to be to get to the job site? And then once it gets there, you know, we spend 30 to 60 days in a warehouse off-gassing all of those materials before we even put them in a project. So that's another very important component. So you know, I think I, one of the last questions I think we had is on the evolution of where we think from our perspective where this is going. And I think we hit on it on the onset is you're going to see a lot more cross-pollination between industries and disciplines, everything from healthcare, working with design experts, working with spa experts. And we've already started down that path. And I think an, an important component of that is the manufacturer as well. And in fact, what I, what I think is the most critical component of that is the manufacturer because we have to be able to work with our manufacturers to develop products that are that are well oriented but also don't compromise the integrity of the design so i just think that that's highly critical we have a great new partnership with wildcat territory that we've been working on a whole new bedding line for that specific reason because it's very hard you it's believe it or not it's very hard to marry those two things together and bring it to market in a way that's attainable to our consumer. One last add on, if I may. Mm -hmm. This oh, this whole conversation wouldn't be any good if we did not give a call out to tradespeople. Because yeah. if you don't have good craftsmen, craftswomen, and yeah. they're extreme, well, where I am down here in Phoenix, you, you practically can't build a house for almost two years now. I mean, they are so far behind. And when you find a good resource, people hog it to their neighbors and, and friends. It doesn't matter whether it's a contractor, a fix-it person, it's a, it's a plumber, an electrician. You've got to have good tradespeople. Yes. I think, that's a, I think that's a really important point. And I, I have really seen a much greater appreciation of that um, independent producer whether that's somebody who produces goat's milk soap with a farm out here in Texas where they actually hand milk the goats because those goats are happier. There's really just such a blending and an appreciation of people who, whether they're making, you know, hand printed scarves or hand printed fabric for pillows. And so I, this idea popped into my head that we're just not happy with it being clean it's got to be beautiful too. It's got to nourish our soul and our aesthetic at a, a much higher level than before. Functional alone is just not going to make us very satisfied. And I think we've been starved for that kind of, you know, tactile and visual stimulation. And hopefully we're going to have a greater appreciation of that. And visual stimulation is just just not Netflix. Remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, Patty, I think we've had a real value shift in our consumers. And it's it's um it, at least from my perspective, it's a very welcome path that I'm excited to evolve into. 
I have seen the same, um, honestly, Angela, I appreciate you calling that out. You know, um, we have been so appreciative of our local craftspeople just because of the supply chain interrupt as well. Mm -hmm. And I remember in my own, you know, experience at the beginning of the pandemic, I was so concerned about our local businesses and what this was going to do to our economy that I also need to bring up the power of being able to keep the money with people Absolutely. that you know are, mm -hmm. you want to help their business, you want to support them. And so it feels really good to me to be using my custom upholsterer more, you know, my local furniture maker more. Not only can I control, um, you know, the deadlines and the delivery dates and things better than I can through some of my larger suppliers we used to use, but also I just feel really good supporting their businesses. And I know that they're going to be strong and I know that they're going to be able to feed their families um, and keep things going in that way for our community. Mm -hmm. I yeah, absolutely. Well, I do want to remind our participants, if you have a question, just click that little Q&A tab and enter it in and we'll do our best to address everyone's questions. While you're thinking about any question you might have, um, Kim, I would love to revisit our PowerPoint and show our giveaway that we're doing today <laughs> that I haven't mentioned yet. So if you can bring that up, sorry for skipping it. <laughs> Um, we do have a really exciting giveaway that we're doing for our participants today, um, and it is a Finding Sanctuary journal. I'll wait until it comes up. There we go. So it's a Finding Sanctuary journal, and it features inspirational quotes. It's decorated with watercolors that have been hand-painted by the Lisa, the Lisa here. <laughs> um, so the Soothing Sanctuary candle and spray as well. And that offers a really wonderful scent that Lisa created by mixing her favorite essential oils. Um, the Soothing Sanctuary scent, inspired by the relaxation that a walk on the beach creates, ooh, combines lavender and uh, vetiver oils. Oh, oh, thank you, Lisa, I said that right. The soy candle was made with care by the adults with disabilities at the Star Ability Foundation. And the spray is ideal to create an instant portal in our minds back to that sacred place, our sanctuary place when we travel. That sounds beautiful. I feel like I'm relaxed just reading that description. <laughs> um, so a um, participant will either get messaged via chat or emailed um, by IMC if they were the winner of that giveaway. Um, so by, by finding sanctuary. So awesome. And um, I don't know if we have any questions, but I will check ahead. Um, question for interior designers. What is the best paint line with zero VOCs in your opinion? I'm not in the interior design world, so I don't know if you, <laughs> if you guys, what is the best paint line with zero VOC? I'd love to hear Angela's experience on this. Okay. Um, you know, we use a lot of Sherwin-Williams. We look for manufacturers that are not only low VOC, but no VOC. Mm -hmm. We think that's important. Um, the two key elements uh, are paint and cabinetry, looking for those low VOCs. So Sherwin-Williams is kind of our go-to. It is mine too, I have to say. Yeah. Also not a designer. What is a VOC? Thank you. <laughs> Volatile orga or organic com Compounds. 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 Mm -hmm. Toxins. Toxins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I assume that's big in the carpet area as well now, right? People yes. oh, yeah. don't see type carpet or something like that. Yeah, are you going to pay a lot more for that or no? You know, when it first was introduced, this is at least my experience, when it was first introduced to the market, it was slightly higher. Those price points have come down significantly. So the answer to that should be no. <laughs> Is any of that stuff made? Do we make paint and carpet in the United States still? Carpet, yes. Um, paint, I believe so. Well, I have a question with retailers in mind, um, especially for you, Alan, coming from the spa industry. Um, you know, you had mentioned this store that had a cat present so that, you know, they're they're creating they're not just selling wellness products but this idea of creating a wellness atmosphere in your store do you have any recommendations even if it's just you know fragrance diffusers like having a certain scent in your store like are there products or things that retailers can do cre to create a wellness environment 
Yeah. In fact, there are actually companies that charge a boatload of money to tell you which fragrance you should, you know, casinos are famous for that, right? They are pumping particular fragrances and smells and it's not guesswork. They've spent a lot of time and energy to figure out how to get you to part with your greenbacks and stay in the casino as, as uh, long as possible. Um, I don't have a good answer actually on that uh, question. I know with Within the spa channel, what we co would call the front of the house has become critical to the back of the house. Because if you think about it, it, when someone is doing some form of a treatment in the back, the margins fall into the 25, 35, 40% range, but you can sell retail up front and it can have 50% or 75% or 100% markup. So I think a lot of uh, visual merchandising, something Patty is very good at, at speaking to and making it uh, comfortable where people want, come in and they just go, uh, I think Lisa just said it, it's kind of that ah feeling when you're, you said it, Lenise, where just the conversation of candles and oils is kind of relaxing on the senses. And so I think the spa salon industry works very hard that when you walk through the front door, you're in a different environment. In fact, there's a new trend called Japandi. Have you guys heard about this? Japan DI. It's a cross between Japanese de design and Scandinavian aesthetics. And they have found it's extremely comforting and it slows people down and they're very engaged in Japan D these days. Just to, just to jump in with a couple of things. I think that regardless of the retailer, one of the things that if I walk into a store and I see fresh flowers or beautiful plants, and there's some nice music playing and it has a lovely smell to it. And even if we are doing visual merchandising, we can, we can accommodate things so that there's maybe less touching, but more visual there with, and use things like shelf talkers to give the information and retail consulting. I mean, I really think, okay, so you walk in here, here's this beautiful, fresh display. It smells good. The candles are burning, you know, all of this stuff. And somebody says, can I help you? I think the importance of greeting and welcoming has never been more important in retail. And any good retailer who wants to increase their sales 5% easy will install somebody at the door to be a greeter. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see you again. It changes the whole dynamic and it sets up the, I want to buy something here because I'm special. Especially as isolated as everyone has felt, it's nice even just to chat with a boutique owner. Like just you to make more connected. Is, yeah, just to make eye contact, even with a mask on and, and be welcomed. So yeah. I so, just wanted no, to add something quickly, if I could, you know, um, we bought a new design studio right before the pandemic and we had renovated it and we brought all of the elements, as I understand them, um, of sanctuary into our space. And so this really speaks to what you were just talking about in that retail environment. And, you know, we're very particular then about what goes in here. We created a giant 15 foot moss wall, right? When you walk in, oh, cool. we have crystals and beautiful grids of things based on sacred geometry throughout our space. Mm. We, you know, very carefully picked a reclaimed floor and we used all no VOC paints and we added skylights to get natural light so we didn't need as much electricity in our design library and just on and on you know we were very specific about that and that brings up a really interesting point for designers that I just would love to share and that is that if you are interested in capitalizing on this market of wellness and good health in the home you have to actually embody that yourself and you need to bring that into your space <clears throat> You need to be able to talk about it from a firsthand experience. It's not a gimmick. It's not something you can just put on to use for sales. It's something that you actually need to resonate with if you really want to. If you really want to sell, you need to breathe that kind of a brand yourself. Yeah. Needs to be authentic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just thinking about this. You know, if I didn't really use this, what would I be doing? Well washing. You know, we've had pink washing and other kinds of trends like that. And you're absolutely right, Lisa got to talk the talk and walk the walk. You do. Yeah. So I know we're, we're running up on the end of our time, but I do have um, a great last question. And that's if we can go around really quickly as markets are coming up, you know, people are getting ready to attend Las Vegas market um, here in April. And then we've got, you know, Atlanta market coming up in the summer. 
Um, you know, what exhibitors would you recommend? What are your like top three? You have to go and see these people in Vegas or Atlanta, your top exhibitors you would recommend to visit in this wellness space. For me, that's a hard question to answer. I grew up in the Schmata business. My dad had eight clothing stores in the Minneapolis, St. Paul area. So he was dragging me to trade shows when I was 10 years old. So I'm very efficient at walking the floor and being wide eyed and open and try to let my intuition uh, guide me. So believe it or not, if I'm in Atlanta or I'm in LV Market, I cover almost every floor over the, the course. Now I might stick to the floors that have a little more to do with uh, self-care and wellness, but I think sometimes walking floors where you don't think this is your normal place to be opens your eyes and tells you a lot. So cover the floors, go to both markets. I'll just jump in on there. Rather than specific vendors, I would definitely, even if you've never thought there was a way to integrate pet categories into your retail space, absolutely visit the pet people. Get samples if you can. <laughs> Anything that has to do with home aromatherapy or personal aromatherapy, including aromatherapy jewelry, which is kind of a little extension of that whole concept, is really important to look at. And um, I think one of the categories we didn't really talk enough about today is that we need play spaces and we need toys. And so puzzles and, I mean, there's lots of great vendors like that at all of the markets that have got, you know, fun accessories, fun glassware. Um, I think that's gonna, journals, all of those things are gonna continue to be ways that we help to maintain our sense of wellness and humor is not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, so humorous glasses, soaps with humorous wrappers, really important moving forward and alcohol. <laughs> Angela. Uh, you know, I would probably just piggyback on what Alan said. I think it's really important as we move down this path that you, you don't get pigeonholed into any one category. I mean, I know we'll be at Vegas Market. Um, as interior designers, we usually stick to the interior design showrooms. But lately, the, you know, we've been opening that up to seeing everything. Because if we're talking about designing from a holistic perspective, it's, it's really important for us to understand all elements of that, from gifts to decor to furniture to so forth. So I know for certain we're going to go see our friends over at Phillips Collection. I know we'll go see Charleston Forge. All of that is made in America, so that's important to us. Those are some of the meetings that we have. But beyond that, we're going to do our job and our due diligence to, to visit all floors and, and keep our eyes open and our lens open to learning as much as we possibly can. Awesome. Lisa, what about you? You know, I have to concur. I have felt so separate from market from just having everything canceled and not really feeling comfortable traveling. Um, so I'm just excited to get back to market. I'm always looking for new, always looking for fresh, always looking for unique, you know, new inspiration. So I'm just excited to go back. But I have to say, Angela, I also love the Phillips collection. They just have such interesting materials. Um, but we love so many lines. I go to see everyone that I can possibly fit into my days, honestly. They make us look really good, don't they, Lisa? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And so there is one last question. And I do think it, it's an interesting question because, you know, we're trying to be ultra sensitive, I feel like, right now to, um, you know, different cultures and diversity and trying to listen to one another. And there's a lot of, of sensitivities happening um, in the world. So it's... Um, um, someone, a participant asked, you know, when you're bringing in things like sage sticks or things that are from a different culture, how are, how can you be sensitive to that? So how can you sort of avoid the idea of appropriation or be sensitive to that culture while you're selling something that might be a little bit more personal to them or traditional practice? I'm going to be a little blunt about this. I'm so sick of PC and everything. We The pendulum swings both ways. It goes way back and way forward. My mantra when we do our flock and gather podcast, I always finish by saying, and friends, please be kind to one another. That is my go forward. So I think sometimes think before you talk is always the, the simple answer 
uh, to the go forward. I get a lot of people that comment back to me that say, I love that you remind us to be kind to others. So I just tell people, be careful what you say. Think before you open your mouth. I think too that um, if you tell the story behind it, you know, if you show pictures, whether those are free trade goods or things which may have some other cultural, I mean, we're all on a quest for knowledge and, and wellness betterment. And so if you tell me shelf talker or you have pictures that revolve on an iPad that share the story, what can that do except help to help us understand, respect and embrace other cultural traditions? I mean, I think it's a real opportunity for education. I do too. And I'm so glad you say that because, you know, at, at GDA or magazine, we are constantly harping on telling the story behind your product. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Product. And it seems like such a simple idea, but it's true. It not only creates more engagement and conversation with your customer, but they feel more, you know, connected to the product. Why not teach them about where this product came from, you know, why, you know, did, where, why did it begin? Why did people start using, you know, smudge sticks and what does well, it mean? And, you know, like, and why sage or why lemon verbena or, you know, because then you can get into the whole healthful benefit too. So, yeah, I just think it's a way to make us feel as one community. Absolutely. Well, that is it for our time. You guys have been so amazing. Like the time flew by. This was such a great conversation. Um, so thank you guys so much for participating in our webinar. Thank you guys so much for watching and for listening up to us. <laughs> um, we hope that you got something great out of it. Again, thank you for um, attending this Market Insights webinar from International Market Centers. Um, you know, they were kind enough to let um, give some decorative accessories, uh, partner with them for this one. So thank you guys so much. And I'm sure we'll see you all at market. Thank you. So, bye.